Thank you for coming to the fourth installment of the Dragon Olin Lecture Series. Uh, great to have you here. I'm Scott Miller, the CEO and co-founder of Dragon. We are a company that works with uh, great entrepreneurs to help them go from the prototype to high volume manufacturing, everything from getting ready for a great crowdfunding campaign to uh, manufacturing in high volume. Today we're going to talk about project management. So just walking through the, the different parts of it, and this is really the uh, project management is incredibly hard to do. It takes a lifetime to master, but the best thing to do is to get out there and practice it. So I'll spend a little time walking you through some basic principles, but would really encourage you to get your hands dirty, and uh, you'll, learn, uh, you'll learn a tremendous amount that way. And often project management will decide whether a project succeeds or fails. If you can find the most efficient uh, path through using your resources effectively, you can do amazing things. But if it gets all tangled up, then it's, uh, you know, it's very difficult to move forward. So it's all about you know, figuring out what your goal is and then planning a path to get there. Uh, once you've done that, you want to um, itemize the different steps. So with any complex task, break it down into manageable pieces. So you define your objective, you create milestones, which are significant events along the way. You'll assign uh, people to uh, required to get to the milestones so everybody knows what they're responsible for, and then also assign a duration for a task. And as you do this, uh, and many of the software packages have, um, have this built-in tool, you'll define what's called the critical path which is basically the, um, you can think of it like the path of bottlenecks or um, you know, the things that need to get done to go on to the next step. And by knowing what those bottlenecks are, you know where to focus. If something's not in the critical path, then it's not going to influence your end date one way or the other. So you may put a little less uh, emphasis on it. And I know when I'm creating the project plans, we'll go and um, sketch the whole thing out in front, figure out the critical path, and then ask, oh, Instead of doing this in a serial fashion, could we do it in a parallel fashion? Or could we put more people on it to get it done more, more quickly? And eventually you'll boil it down to a point where you can't, you can't get it any more efficient without, without kidding yourself. And then once you've got the plan, then the um, trick is executing on it and then tracking your changes. So one of the different tools we'll talk about today is called the Gantt chart, where each task will have a bar. And often for the tracking, you can see what percent done you are and you'll want to correlate that percent done with the today bar, and ideally you're further done than the today bar. But if you're not, then you'll know how far you're, you're falling behind. And then, of course, nothing ever goes according to plan, so you're always adjusting and, um, and uh, figuring a way to get through the, through, the miles, uh, through the blockers. And then at the end, uh, you'll complete it. So one of the biggest challenges we see is communication. And uh, a project plan is a great way to, to try to address some of those. I'll walk through a, just a quick story of, of the way we did it at iRobot when we were building the first Roomba. So let's think of um, Elliot here, who has an idea. He'll say he's our mechanical engineer designing the product. So he designs it and then packages up his work, sends it over uh, in the form of a database to China where the machine shop, uh, a bunch of, say, 60 or so machinists that have never met Elliot and don't know anything about robot vacuum cleaners are going to unpack his database and try to figure out what Elliot had in mind. And they'll go ahead and create these tools, which, as I talked about, are these big chunks of steel, very hard to change. From there, the parts will be molded and go over to roughly 5,000 different workers who have probably never met the machinist and certainly have never met Elliot, at least in the beginning. And they really don't know what a robot vacuum is. But uh, if the design's uh, done well, it will uh, go together only one way, and uh, they'll be able to build it and generate lots of product. The trick is communicating all of this information, um, and this is a really hard part, of um, having the workers be able to communicate with the tooling shop what worked and what didn't. Maybe the tolerances are a little bit off, or one part's a little sticky and doesn't fit together as well as it should. And then having the machinists communicate with Elliot saying, oh, if you had designed it slightly differently, it would be much easier to tool or potentially much more easy to, uh, uh, to put together. So as a way to handle all the different uh, steps in the project uh, management, we have a, um, a few different techniques we can use. Uh, I typically go for the traditional project management, which is based off of a Gantt chart. So and, and we'll, we'll take a look at the Gantt chart in a sec. 
A lot of the software folks use Scrum, which is a series of sprints uh, over usually a one or two week period to get a certain set of objectives done. Then you reevaluate, um, listen to the voice of the customer, and can adjust and adapt, and then sprint again, and then basically rinse and repeat. Uh, and it works well for software. And then uh, another one out there is a theory of constraints. And basically, this works by figuring out, as we talked about, what's the bottleneck, and then giving every resource you have to get that bottleneck solved, and then going on to the next one uh, so that you get the process flowing smoothly. A bunch of great tools. Uh, we use a Smartsheet, and I'll, I'll show you a picture of, of that in a sec. Uh, what we like to do is, uh, as you develop it, create tools that you can then reuse the next time. So maybe you're creating an injection molded part and you want to uh, walk through from the CAD model to adding the drafts and rounds to design reviews to uh, sitting down with the factory uh, to hand over the design to creating the first shots to uh, an engineering pilot one and then finally shipping the product. So the first time you'd figure this out, but where the real value comes is if you can create a tool or a template that you can use the next time. And then you'll also develop uh, some data as to how well did you do on your milestones. So usually everybody will get a scaling factor because we're all optimistic that you might plan it out and say, oh, it's going to take this long. You've done it a few times and say, oh, well, my scaling factor is one and a half. Things usually take one and a half times as long as I think they do. And you can incorporate that in just so you, you get a more accurate date. Uh, at the end of it. And also by creating a tool, make sure that you don't miss any milestones or any big things, uh, and it, it'll make your work a lot more efficient. Uh, as we talked about, the biggest failure mode is communication. So as a project manager, it's incredibly important to talk with your team, uh, update that, communicate where we're running behind, where we're doing okay, see if people are overloaded and need more uh, help from other folks on the team, or if ever, everything's running smoothly. Just creating a Gantt chart in a vacuum is useless. It's really a, a tool that's been, um, that's essential to communicate with and, uh, and get feedback and then iterate over time. And then the example we have from Dragon uh, with project management is it's fairly complex. That often we say have a customer in California, Dragon uh, HQ is based in Boston, We've got a team in Shenzhen and then a factory in Shenzhen. So being able to keep everybody in sync with what's required and how we're doing on the schedule. It even gets more complex because everything we do is usually driven by the Christmas season because we do a lot of consumer electronics. And if you miss that, then you've lost a huge amount of revenue. So it's very important to be able to understand, are we on track? Uh, or if we're not, what do we have to do to, to catch up? This is a very common uh, Gantt chart where we've got the tasks uh, which are nested going around down the left side, the start date, the end date, any uh, dependency, so what tasks are dependent on other tasks being finished before they can start, which are these little black lines, uh, how far uh, complete is it, and then also there's a duration, um, yeah, here's a duration line of how long is it going to take. And then what's not shown on here is the resources, so that you know every person that's responsible for getting the job done. Uh, so that's a quick overview of project management. But as I mentioned in the beginning, the best thing here is to um, create a project plan. We love Smartsheet. It's a great uh, tool in the cloud, so everybody can use it. And then uh, get your hands dirty implementing it and try to figure out what your scaling factor is. Uh, it's, again, a, a lifelong um, skill to work on, and the best way to, to get it is to get out there and use it. Any, uh, any questions? I, I just wondered if you'd share with us a little bit about what it's like to get a factory of 5,000 people to change over to a new product. So there's a lot of inertia. Um, with this, we typically work, we work all up and down the management chain, but the key things factories care about is not paying, like they'll never buy software. So what I like about Smartsheet is Dragon pays for it, and it's a very reasonable price, and it's in the cloud, so everybody can see it. But you're not trying to convince them to, to buy MS Project, which they're never going to do. Um, so it's tools right there for them, and it's super easy to use. The Smartsheet has probably 70% of the functionality of MS Project, but it's just enough for what you need to get done. Um, so they're pretty quick to uh, 
usually they're pretty quick to absorb it, or at least the engineers. And then from the engineers, all of that workflow will uh, translate to the actual workers doing the real work. So the workers themselves wouldn't be looking at it. It's just uh, coordinating with a smaller cohort of, of the, the engineering staff. And when they see how powerful it is, they, they usually get pretty excited and, and are happy to use it. That's a great question, though. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks all uh, for coming today. Uh, we'll have our fifth episode coming up in a little bit. Take care.